Hi everyone, Big Paulie back for a brand new episode of What Flick Will Paulie Pick? Yes, wow, I tell you what I'll pick, or what everybody will pick, Full Metal Jacket. Yes, 73 votes, that's a whopper, yes. I'm sorry for anybody that wanted me to watch the Emoji movie, but Full Metal Jacket, Jacket, Full Metal Jacket won. Uh, there is a slight problem. I actually don't own it. I thought I had it on 4K, but I must never have picked it up. So I think I'm going to have to rent it in 4K with Dolby Vision and all that kind of stuff from uh, from Apple TV. So, yes, I really thought I had it. OK, so I'm going to have to fire up the Apple 4K TV and uh, let's rent Full Metal Jacket. I think that's the first time a what flick I've had to rent something. But I want the best quality. Anyway, let's get on with it. <laughs> Two hours later. Okay, so Full Metal Jacket, written and directed by Stanley Kubrick, released in 1987, so 34 years old. And this tells the story of a group of new recruit Marines at boot camp under the heavy foot of Arlie Ermey uh, as the drill sergeant. It's a film of two halves, really. The first half of the film is all about boot camp, the training, everything that all these soldiers have to go through with the obstacle courses being shouted at <laughs> quite a lot. I'll remove your head and shit down your neck. Insults, all sorts of insults these poor fellas get to get them motivated into these killing machines that they need to be. And the last half of the film is when a lot of these Marines have been shipped out to Vietnam. Some of them go into the infantry and some of them, including Matthew Modine's character, Joker, after finishing boot camp and training, uh, goes out to Vietnam. But instead of going into infantry, um, he goes to work for Stars and Stripes magazine, reporting on the, the war effort that's going on and meeting up with some of the soldiers, taking their stories. Uh, they also have a camera crew with them as well. So this film could be looked at in several different ways. Uh, it is a marine training film. So it's a rec recruitment film, uh, but it also is a propaganda film as well. And it's aimed only at the characters themselves, whereas a lot of war films are about the war, the situation. This is focused mainly on all of the characters. As I say, we have Matthew Modine. We have a very young Adam Baldwin. There are also a few other recognisable characters from uh, various TV shows, including Jack's father from Lost and Vincent D'Onoff. I can never pronounce his name. Vincent D'Onofrio. Yes, he was in uh, Men in Black. He's the one that pulled the skin back over his face. Is this all right? <laughs> uh, but uh, I mainly know him from Daredevil, from Hell's Kitchen. And uh, yeah, he was fantastic in that. But yeah, he was really great in this. He's the kind of a simpleton. Are we allowed to call him simpleton? He's the slow person that's joined the Marine Corps. Uh, and he's always behind everybody else. You know, he can't assemble a rifle. Uh, he can't do the obstacle course. He's probably like me when I was at school in PE. Always lagging behind. But as training moves on, uh, they get to the stage where they have to put rifles in the hands of these wannabe soldiers. Uh, and putting a rifle in his hands probably wasn't the best move. You can see it from the glint in his eye when he gets a rifle, how he takes this rifle, how he makes it his possession, how he talks to it, he gives it a name, and the look in his face uh, when he's confronted in that bathroom. Um, 
it's a good job that bathroom had many toilets because I, yeah, I shit myself in that scene. As for the heart and soul of this film, uh, mainly the first half of the film, Arlie Ermey, the drill sergeant, who, for the first half an hour, this film was a comedy. <laughs> I don't know if they intended that or if Stanley Kubrick even realised that he was making a comedy, at least for the first half an hour of the film. The training, the finding out who these soldiers, these wannabe soldiers are, these trainees, the insults, name calling, you name it, he barks it at them. And it is done so brilliantly. And I swear I was looking at all of these actors and not one of them had a bursting grin or trying to hold it back. They they pulled that off really well, that scene. And from what I understand, a lot of the actors playing these trainee soldiers were actually not introduced to Ali Ermey because Stanley Kubrick wanted to keep them apart and he didn't want them interacting with each other so that they could keep it together on set. Now, Arlie Ermey is no stranger for playing this type of character. Yes, this is what made him famous as the drill sergeant. He's turned up in Toy Story 3 as the voice of the little plastic green soldier. He's been in a few spoof movies. Uh, you can hear his voice in Starship Troopers. Uh, in fact, I think he actually played uh, a drill instructor in one of the Starship Troopers movies. It may be the second one. I can't remember. Or maybe it was Marauders. But the closest he's played to this character in Full Metal Jacket has to be the training sergeant from the short-lived space science fiction series Space Above and Beyond. I am Sergeant Major Bogus. I am your senior drill instructor. I am here to turn you slimy civilian cesspool parasites into United States Marine Corps space aviators. Why are you here? Sir, to find a direction, sir. A direction? Are you lost? In space, no one can hear you scream unless it is the battle cry of the United States Marines. So yeah, I really enjoyed this film. It was a first time watch for me. I'm not a huge Stanley Kubrick fan. You know, uh, I haven't seen Clockwork Orange. I always remember my mum saying it's such a weird film. She doesn't know what the hell was going on with it. Uh, but I will eventually watch a Clock Clockwork Orange as well as a few others. 2001, I haven't seen it all the way through. So I need to watch that, uh, especially in 4K. But this is a great war film, a great war film. Uh, my favourite war film of all time is Saving Private Ryan. This is not quite up there. Uh, it's just a little notch, you know, it's like a belt notch below. Uh, but it's still a really great war film. The performances were fantastic, especially from Ali Ermey, Vincent Denor, or <laughs> <laughs> and Matthew Modine and a lot of the other characters. And I have to say, this is probably, I think, Adam Baldwin's best performance outside of Firefly. The film looked absolutely gorgeous. As I didn't have a physical copy, I did watch the 4K uh, with the Dolby Vision. I didn't get a full sound. So I believe the physical 4K probably has a Dolby Atmos soundtrack. Correct me if I'm wrong. But the sound was still fantastic with sounds all around. Helicopters flying almost overhead. Strange noises in the background, especially at the end of the film when they were in this war zone and they were trying to pick off this sniper. And there were crackles from flames in one side, bullets coming out of guns in, the, in another side. And the whole sound was widespread. The 4K image quality was fantastic, even though it was an Apple stream on iTunes. It was so clean. You could definitely tell this has been given the full 4K treatment. When they were walking through like broken rubble and grit, I could see in each individual little piece of grit on the floor. Truly a beautiful image. No grain. It just looked like it was filmed today. The music they used was perfect for the time and it gives you that real authentic feeling of being out there fighting in Vietnam. As I stated, I didn't have it on physical. I really thought that I purchased it, 
but that has been corrected now. I have actually ordered the 4K, so that should be delivered in a couple of days. I look forward to watching the physical copy with maybe a Dolby Atmos soundtrack because although 4K streaming is good, it can't compare to a physical copy in both sound and picture quality. It just can't do it. So how would I rate Full Metal Jacket on a scale of 1 to 10? I'm going to give it 9.5 drill sergeants out of 10. Yes, Saving Private Ryan is a 10 for me, but this comes in just a smidgen under. So that is my review of Stanley Kubrick's epic Vietnam masterpiece Full Metal Jacket. I hope you enjoyed the review. I'm going to finish the review with a few very meaningful words about this film. Saki Saki, me horny, me love you lots. Okay, so that is my review of Full Metal Jacket. The, why am I doing my hands like, the reason why I'm doing my hands is because I don't have anything physical in my hands to hold. There, I'm holding my drink. <laughs> if I'd had my 4K, I could have been waving it, yes. But that is my review of Full Metal Jacket. So let's go on to pick another five for the next what flick will Paulie pick. Okay, so there we have Full Metal Jacket into the pot of film scene. Blimey, look how many that we've actually seen. Wow, that's great. Okay, I have given the pot a really big shake because nobody wants to see a fat man dance. <laughs> <laughs> so let's pick the next five. I wonder what we're going to get. What are we going to get? What's the first one out? First one out is the Informer. Okay. And then I think the Informer came from HMV's bargain bin. Uh, should we get that one in the middle? Because we don't know what that's going to be. Next one up is... Saving Mr. Banks, Tom Hanks. I've not seen that uh, film. Uh, is it about uh, Mary Poppins, isn't it? Uh, Disney. That was sent to me by my lovely subscriber, Lewis. Uh, what else have we got? What have we got here? Oh. <laughs> They're all wrapped around each other. Hang on, let's get rid of that one. Okie dokie. So the third one coming out of the bin... Oh, that's a long one. That's what she said. The Hills Have Eyes 2. Okay, well, I haven't seen The Hills Have Eyes. So, we'll still watch it, though. <laughs> if it gets voted. And then I've got one right down the bottom here. Okay. Uh, this one is... The Breadwinner. Uh, that's an animated one. That one comes also from my subscriber, Lewis. And then maybe we'll go down there and under there and get that one. What's that one? The Deer Hunter. Uh, Robert De Niro. Do you know what? First time watch. Never seen it. Right, so here are the next ones up. We have The Informer. Saving Mr. Banks, The Hills Have Eyes 2, The Breadwinner, and The Deer Hunter. Okay, so again, a really nice selection there. It's great when we get various ones in a selection, from animated films, to war films, to thrillers, to scary films, because uh, it just gives it a nice selection. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they are the selection. So in order to vote for the next one, down in the comments, at the top of the comment section, I've pinned it with a little pin. Uh, <laughs> there is a straw poll vote. So you just click on that link and make your vote. And then in a couple of weeks, <laughs> hopefully not too long, um, <laughs> whatever wins, I shall watch. So brilliant. So I hope you enjoyed this What Flick will poorly pick again a great one this time really great i knew it was a good film i'd never seen it before i'd only seen clips but that's a truly epic war film 
fantastic. So hope you enjoyed the video. Like it by giving it some thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, comment and share. And I shall see you on the next What Flick with Paulie Pick.